For the past half a century, India has been at the forefront of tiger conservation. India is the largest tiger range country in the world. With more than 3,000 tigers, India is now home to 70% of the world's tiger population. But it wasn't always that way. Tigers were being decimated due to hunting, both by the Indian royalty and the British. And throughout the period, uh, there was a huge amount of deforestation. There was no legal framework to protect wildlife. Hunting and habitat loss reduced tiger numbers from 40,000 at the beginning of the 20th century to less than 2,000 by 1970. We were in a situation that we would have lost probably all wild tigers. Hunting was finally banned in 1972 after a census showed India's tigers were fast going extinct and Project Tiger was launched by Prime Minister Indira Gandhi a year later. Project Tiger was born to protect the land of the tiger. Nine tiger reserves were set aside at that time representing different ecological systems. And in 1972, the Wildlife Protection Act set up a strong legal framework to protect tigers. India is a country where protecting nature is a part of culture. But while India can now boast the world's highest number of tigers, it also has the world's highest level of tiger poaching. No tiger is safe as long as they demand for tiger products. Its bones, its whiskers, its penis for heaven's sake, everything for traditional Chinese medicine. But tiger conservation has come at a cost. The Genu Kuruba are a tribal community from the mountainous Nilgiris area bordering the states of Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Karnataka. They say they've been displaced by tiger conservation and forced into labouring for local farmers. There is in fact a study from Chitwan National Park that show that tigers and people use these same landscapes. Tiger use it at night and people by day. And while the custodians of the forest are being evicted, thousands of tourists are welcomed. They have invited investment from businesses into tiger conservation. There is this huge investment in camera traps, in estimation machineries, drones. So these are, in some sense, commodified landscapes. Ecotourism is another big earner of revenue. Shivu says he wants to go back to a life where indigenous communities and tigers live together. Critics say India's conservation policies are heavily influenced by American environmentalism and prejudiced against indigenous communities. This has a colonial history because you have a bureaucracy that was trained, hierarchized and set up by the British. And India is a deeply caste-based, racialized society. And this follows a long legacy of protection under the British, uh, beginning in the 1880s, when they reserved forests for timber. And uh, these reserved forests were then converted to wildlife sanctuaries following the Yellowstone model of fortress conservation. The 2006 Forest Rights Act legally recognised the rights of communities to live in forests and manage the land. But some experts say it's not that simple. The strategy for tiger conservation is that the core areas of tiger reserve be undisturbed. And this is scientifically established that tigers do need undisturbed spaces for successful breeding. But it's very complex, living with tigers. One of my research sites, we have 40 to 50 people killed every year by tiger. And adding to the squeeze on both tribal land and tigers is the larger issue of encroachment. Indigenous communities all over the country have had land wrested by private companies, developers, and even state governments, all keen on rapid urbanization. But Shivu says he and his people won't give up the fight to reclaim their land and their way of life. <laughs> Uh, 
ಕಾಡಿನ ಮಿಕಗಳು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಪ್ರಾಣಿಗಳು ಅನ್ನೋದು ಏನಿದೆ ಆನೆ ಹುಲಿ ಕರಡಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಹಿರಿಕರು ಅದನ್ನೇ ಆರಾಧಿಸಿ ಅದನ್ನೇ ದೇವ್ರು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ನಾವು ನಂಬ